Hey folks, Quillateen here, and welcome to Let's Play Some Plague Inc. Involved! Not involved, evolved! Oh god, I've been streaming for um, just about four hours now. I've been doing a lot of different games and kind of get on tired edge and want something I can play relatively quickly, so that game is going to be some Plague Inc. in Evolved. So, um, I played this, well not this game exactly a lot, but it is based on a, a Flash game called uh, Pandemic. Pandemic and then Pandemic 2. Not to be confused with the pandemic board, pandemic board game. Very different things. Um, and then it was made, uh, this, this guy made this Plague Inc. game on, uh, for, for um, mobile devices. And I've been playing that and it's great fun. And I've beaten both Pandemic, Pandemic 2, and Plague Inc. on the phone quite a bit of time. But ever since I got it on the computer, it's like all my old strategies don't work. And I'm getting my butt kicked. I actually haven't beaten the game on the computer version yet. I mean, I've only played it like, you know, four or five times or something like that. So clearly I have to adjust my thinking. Now, I've been intentionally not going out and checking the spoilers, but all the good combinations and all that sort of stuff. So what is this game all about? This game is you are you are a virus or a bacteria or whatever that is uh, trying to kill all humans is the way that it comes down to. You are intentionally sort of evolving this, this disease to try to kill off everyone. And the, the challenge is that you are you are trying to keep a low profile. You're trying to spread to all humans without alerting them that you are there or worrying them about it. Because if they start to get worried about you, they're gonna work on a cure. And if they cure you too quickly, then you will lose. Your, your goal is to try to infect everyone on Earth and then kill them all before they can cure the disease. So, I'm gonna go into single player here. There's a few different modes. Now, some of these are not yet um, available. So they're not currently uh, uh, available in the early access builds. This is just on early access on Steam. The current price for uh, Plague Inc. is sitting at $15. And you know what? I think there's enough replayability in this sort of thing that it's actually a fairly fair price, except with the caveat that I always say, listen, don't pre-order games, don't buy games before they're done, anything like that, because you never know. It might never get finished. It might turn out to be garbage or whatever. Um, I, I do think that this one is is relatively good, though. So anyway, we're going to go into the main game and not play anything there. So we uh, there's a bunch of different types of diseases. As you can see in the main game here, I've not unlocked anything other than the bacteria because I, uh, I haven't adjusted my play yet. So we're going to have to play as the bacteria. It is pretty good. It's very common. And uh, it does evolve relatively quickly and relatively well. So we're going to do that. And then there's these gene these genetic codes that you can modify i have unlocked one called darwinist which will actually cause my disease to mutate more frequently by itself i'm going to leave this sort of vanilla experience at this point i've only unlocked three percent of the genes that's one pretty bad so we got to choose a difficulty i will keep it on normal for this you can see so two-thirds of people wash hands doctors work three days a week sick people are ignored there's brutal compulsive hand washing doctors never go home sick people locked in prison mega brutal genetic drift impacts evolution doctors invest in research random medical checkups like just brutal i like casual no one washes their hands um i don't know maybe we should do casual no we'll go normal difficulty it'll be fine so the very very important thing is what exactly are we going to name our disease? Obviously, the, the disease name has to be something that is completely just brutal and miserable and a real detriment to humanity. Something that is just, you know, you would not want to inflict this on your worst enemy. I can't, I don't know what I might think about calling my disease in my test runs, you know, to maybe get out a little bit of aggression or, or frustration from time to time. I don't know, but if people could come up with something, that'd be good. While you guys discuss in the uh, live stream chat, I'm going to crack open my uh, my bone shaker, some unfiltered India Pale Ale, because it has been a long, long stream. Let's see what people are suggesting. Uh, Brussels, of course, or Belgium would obviously be good. George R.R. R. Martin. All right, that's pretty good. Quillfluenza, that's good too. Doge, Backseat, EA Games, Justin Bieber, Call of Duty, um, Brusselitis. That actually sounds like a disease, not like um, like some sort of joint thing, like bruce brusitis. I, I don't know. Twitch chat, yeah, maybe in honor of the fact that we're watching a uh, that this is doing being done on a live stream, maybe we should do that. Your name is Shaker. I was thinking I could call it something like bad beer, but that's not that great. Um, Twitch chat, brusitis, marketing, yeah, Canadianism. Oh, Nyan cat, France, Homo sapien, yeah. Some people would agree with you. Football. Well, it is the World Cup. So maybe we should go with something like that. Ubisoft, Minecraft, One Direction. Arthritis. Mm, that's a little bit dull. Also real. Light beer. Bronyism. 
trollitis. All right, we'll call it, in, in honor of the fact that we're doing this on the live stream, we'll call it Twitch chat. Twitch chat is the disease, the plague, that is going to plague humanity here. So we're going to do that. Welcome to Plague Inc. You are a new bacteria. To win, you must evolve and spread across the world, wiping out all humans in the ultimate plague. Select a country to begin your plague. When you click on it, you can see more information. Pop the start balloon to confirm. So, um, the game does start off pause. Yes, it does. It's got today's date over there, and we do have the whole world. We can zoom in. Oh, it's very pretty. There's no point whatsoever in zooming in. Other than the fact, it really is quite a lovely map, actually, I do have to say. Now, in the old version, here's what I used to do. I would start in Iceland, and the reason was this. So these countries, some of the countries have, and you can see here, there's airports and uh, ports, right? So the chance that your disease happens to get, say, on a plane or a boat leaving the country was based on how many infected people were in the nation. But your chance of being discovered in, um, well, like, globally, was based on how many people worldwide were infected. Again, this is the older version of the game. So, I'd start in Iceland because it would have like basically no population. I would grow to infect like 100 people, 100% 100 of the people in Iceland, and that would start the disease spreading all over the world quite quickly on all these planes and boats um, while still keeping a low profile. But I haven't found that, that recipe working in here. And um, I'm finding the reason is, is it takes a very long time to spread to all of Africa. And I think it's because they actually have a, they have very few ports and airports. Um, like, it, I have to basically wait. It goes to Europe pretty quickly, short trip, and then sort of spreads through here and hits Egypt and then spreads out west and south from there. But these are always the last nations to get infected. And I've had several games end where I had infected everyone in the world. Um, but, you know, they, the cure happens before everyone, say, down here dies. Or what sometimes happens, then I'm like, okay, I've got to make my disease more lethal. I end up killing everyone who's infected before I infect everyone. Or, you know, or something just happens, they get the cure or something like that. Now, I saw earlier, some people suggest that India or Egypt are a very, very good start. It's a nice central location, say, Egypt here. Um, and it does have, it actually has two ports, which is interesting. One in the Mediterranean and one in the, this, this is the, Persian Gulf. This is the... Oh, God, my geography is so bad. You know, you think for someone who plays stuff like EU4 all the time, I would know this better. Uh, the place next to the Suez Canal thing. Anyway, uh, so there's there's more direction there, and it could, it could certainly spread to Africa and also into the Middle East, into Europe and Asia, which might be a good way to go for it. Madagascar, classically, is the big problem in this game, of course, because it only has one port, and if you draw too much attention, they will close that port, and they're isolated, so they won't get the disease. The Red Sea, apparently. All right. But you know, it feels like maybe I should start in Canada. I apologize to anyone watching this on YouTube that they're not seeing the chat and getting the interaction. Red Sea, ah, oh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna start in Egypt. I wanna see how this works. Apparently, India might also be a good one. It does have the ports and the airports. But our first go, we will start in Egypt. So, let's hit start. So, let's give a quick pause and look over the different menus. First of all, these little pop-ups here will give me more um, sort of DNA evolution points. In fact, we might get a pop-up the first time. No, but you can see it went from zero to one over here. If I take a look at my disease screen, there's me. There's Twitch chat. Isn't it cute? Aw. like the interface. It looks cool. It looks like there's a lot of stuff going on. It looks like um, something you'd see on, I don't know, like a CSI type show or something like that, you know? Lots of extra information that doesn't necessarily mean anything. we got some trends and things we'll check out later on. Uh, and, and we can spend our points. So right now, we don't have enough points to spend on anything, but we can spend points on things that increase transmission. So... Uh, carried by birds, rodents, livestock, insects, blood transfusions, and whether it can live in the water or be transmitted by air, for example. We've got symptoms we can unlock. That doesn't look like there's very many right now, but as we go here, more and more things will become visible. So the symptoms we could pick up early would be insomnia, cysts, anemia, a rash, coughing, or nausea. Now, as I click on these things, you can see at the bottom, and I realize I'm actually covering something important, so give me a second here to move my, whoa, not that. I wanna move my face a little out of the way of the lethality. Actually, maybe the other side of the screen would make more sense. No, here will be okay. All right, so these little meters, as you select different things, will go up. So if I take cysts, infectivity would go up quite a bit and severity would as well. Now, severity by itself, I don't believe does anything for us. I think severity is really the sign that tells the world like, hey, this is a disease we need to worry about. So ideally, it keeps severity quite low. If you can get your infectivity higher, you know, bonus there. And ultimately, you will want your lethality to go up. 
And so different things will have different effects here. Like if we look at the amenia, uh, amenia, anemia, um, it actually doesn't bump up severity quite as much. Insomnia does nothing for infectivity, but increases severity quite a bit. Coughing is quite good for infectivity. So little things like that. And then finally, there's extra abilities you can have here, such as cold resistance, heat resistance, drug resistance, which leads to actually some pretty important things later on. And this is our special bacterial resistance, which does all climates. So I don't know if it's as good as heat and cold um, or what, like presumably it does both cold and heat together. Whether it's as good as either one of these, I don't know, but I think they're pretty good. Anyway, right now we can't afford anything, so we'll just continue taking it on now. If we do go and click on Egypt over here, we can get a lot of information about it. It is a hot, arid country that's relatively poor, and that can affect uh, how diseases get spread around there. Right now, there's 81 million healthy people, one infected person throughout the entire world. We can find out about the world status. Twitch chat has not been noticed yet. And uh, overall infected people, there's no research being done about it. Countries that are infected, only one is infected. No countries have been wiped out yet. Open airports and airports and borders, seaports, airports, borders, that sort of thing. All right. So let's go and uh, hit play on normal speed. Twitch chat begins in Egypt. Twitch chat has infected its first human. Weak and used to hot temperatures, it must evolve using DNA points to infect more people. So it is used to hot temperatures, I guess, because we started there. So that's good to know. That's probably part of the reason why I, when I'm starting in Iceland, it's having a hard time spreading in Africa, despite the fact that I spend quite a bit of money on trying to, um, or not money, but evolution points, trying to get the heat resistance up. Oh, we got the one little red dot there. Just a little bit of infection. So we are going to get some um, disease evolution points kind of automatically. It kind of, no matter where I put my head, it's going to be a bit of a problem. We'll do something like that. So the face cam is only here, of course, because we are doing the live stream. There we go. More DNA points. We can probably put up the speed to medium at this point, actually. Watch the airplanes go by, and we're just waiting for the evolutions or the infected infection to spread. We've got five people now. We'll get DNA points semi-regularly. I don't know what all the mechanics are for getting them automatically. And then sometimes we'll get the bubble as well, which we want to click to get extra points. See, we just got an extra one there. It seems to be based on when people get infected or killed or something that is like a certain amount of progression there that, that gives you that. And I think understanding that would be a key to a lot of stuff. New fall in urban population density. Population density in urban environments has fallen, making them less vulnerable to disease. Oh, well, that's good. Every time you play, there will be a completely different set of uh, random events that can be triggered that will affect how you want to potentially mutate your disease. So for example, one of the mutations we could take the rodents, if I recall correctly, transmission by rodents helps increase infectivity, especially in urban regions and also will increase like automatic mutations. So the rodent evolution would not be quite as helpful for us this time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab the first rank of bacterial resistance because I think it is pretty good all over. Um, now, if we do want to spread in Egypt a little bit faster, because we know it is a hot, dry country, what we could do is go with, obviously, the heat resistance, for one, but we could also take the air resistance, or the air transmission, because I believe that works better in arid climates. Let's go and take a look at that right now, actually. Yeah, see? Uh, in arid environments, and also airplanes, this will transmit better. So if we grab that, that might be a good idea. I don't know if that's a good way to start, but we're going to do that. And I've tried not to spoil myself too much because a big part of the fun in this is finding discovery. For example, one of the other things you can do in the diseases and their symptoms, there's a lot of combinations of symptoms that can actually lead to a certain type of bonus. Um, insomnia and something else, or is it coma and something else, can lead to something called like zombieism. And if you did that, it will dramatically increase the effectiveness of your disease by finding those little combos. Uh, there's also... Well, some of, them, some of them are not very appealing, so I, I don't want to discuss necessarily too many of them because it can be pretty gross. I don't know if anyone's eating or has, you know, sensitivities to that. God, if you're a hypochondriac, do not play this game. Yay, DNA. All right. So we've got 137 people infected. Good stuff. <laughs> so some people, some people say it's better to do water and air resistance. Metabolic boost, that sounds like a zergling thing. Get water and air first. And that's what I usually do. Often, I will get like the first rank of the bacteria here. Because, you know, survivability in all climates sounds pretty good. But yeah, I like to get the uh, the air and water because it increases the water, also increases the ship transmission rates, which is pretty good. And there's a lot of wet areas. Obviously, here in Egypt, we're not in a wet area. 
So that's not going to help us short term. We're going to want that relatively quickly because we want to increase the chance of the ship transmission. But right now, we just need to get the number of people in Egypt higher so that it increases the chance that someone who's infected gets on the ship in the first place. This is the way I keep thinking it. Water, air, bird, wait on Simpsons bit symptoms a bit. Yeah, bird might not be too bad. What's nice about the bird transmission is that it always increases land transmission, which is usually pretty handy. Uh, we don't need livestock right now because it's not rural. Uh, insects is better for hot climate. That's pretty good. And the blood transmission increases in poor regions. So, you know what? Maybe we'll do the bird thing. We'll be like a the bird flu. Oops. Didn't mean to click out there. Number infected. Definitely growing. Ooh, just got plus three for free there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently the sneezing and diarrhea combo is named oops. I don't think I've unlocked that one yet. We're gonna have to go and try it. 1700 people, 1900 people. There we go. It's starting to go kind of like geometric here. Police frame politician. There's lots of news too. Tensions in Ukraine reach critical level. <laughs> leaning Tower Pisa is leaning the wrong way. Mankini not funny says Kazakh professor. I don't know that. Oh, the Mankini. Ah, uh, gamers worldwide begin worshiping Helix Fossil. There we go. There's something really appropriate for the Twitch chat episode. <clears throat> Seeing if there's some more uh, advice coming in from the uh, Twitch chat here. Some of it may be good. Some of it may be bad. We don't know. What is that? CDC protocols have dialas dial dialysis bloodstream infections really i wonder if that literally means it's going to be harder to do the blood transmission thing maybe making that mutation particularly less useful oh rash symptom mutated automatically so twitch chat has mutated and developed the rash symptom without using dna points now here's always a question do you leave those in or not because you can actually remove them we'd actually get two dna points back now at this point in the game, um, while it did increase the infectivity quite a bit, usually the idea is to, to de-evolve these so that it decreases the chance that you get noticed early. Yes, it can help you spread faster, but you want to fly under the radar. So normally you just you devolve it, or at least a lot of times, a lot of people say it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my points back. We're going to do that. It'll drop our infectivity, but it'll also drop the severity. We want to run, you know, under the radar. And we can use these points to do a little bit more. I think I'm going to do the uh, the water stuff. Increases infectivity, especially in humid environments and ship transmissions. And that's really our goal. Now, I usually don't go beyond the level one in both of those. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Depends on some of the events. But right now, there we go. 25,000, 31, 35,000, 40,000, 45,000. Massively infecting Egypt right now. And we're just waiting for it to get on a boat or a plane. Or to do the bird thing and just migrate. Aha! We have spread to Sudan. There we go. That's exactly what we're hoping to do. Although, frankly, I really want to move to uh, richer nations as fast as possible. There we go. Spreading throughout the Middle East now and Northeast Africa. If we can get into Europe and then you can start to... Because richer nations tend to do more research. So the quicker you can shut down rich nations, the better off you'll be in terms of staying... Uh, well, not staying under the radar. They only start to research once they have noticed you. But once they have noticed you, you can delay their cure by breaking down the rich nations as much as possible. All right, only 7 billion people left to go. Like this, we're almost at a million. There we go. Almost. Danish mafia becoming too powerful. Recent events involving the Danish mafia have prompted the German chancellor to commission a new investigation into organized crime and antisocial behavior. I don't know how that, that... I don't know how that would affect me. Or if it's a reference to something. Is it about, like, the dessert? The Danishes? <gasps> look, 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 look! The ship, the ship, the ship! Where's it going? Go to Madagascar. Go to Madagascar. Okay, that's fine, too. South Africa is okay. Japan, nice. That was a plane. Hit Japan. All right, now we're talking. Now that's it. Now, there are speed runs in this game, and for speed runs, you might want to be, like, really aggressive about some of the mutations. Right now, we're just going for a win overall, so I'm going to try to stay under the radar as long as possible, keep playing that game, and do what we can. But right now, we're getting a lot of DNA points. Later on, it will drop off quite quickly. Once everyone is infected and things sort of stop happening. Another plane went to, uh, is it just called South Africa? Yeah. 
I mean, obviously there's a country here called South Africa, but these regions, like some of these regions are like Central Africa. Like, yeah, we're not naming all the nations anymore. Okay, we've got 18 points. Do we throw another mutation in here? I think so. We don't need drug resistance yet. It helps you spread in wealthy countries and also can unlock some pretty useful abilities for later on. Hmm. I don't know. I might start to think about the drug resistance, actually. Just to get it out of the way early. The indie gamer is suggesting to get heat and cold resistance. Now, above and beyond, or instead of the bacterial resistance, it's so cheap. Eight DNA points. Survivability in all climates. Well, if we're going to do anything, we'd probably do heat resistance right now, because we're mostly in a hot area. Uh, Linoge wants to know if it's a virus, bacteria, or parasite. This is a this is a bacteria, but there are like eight or ten different types of uh, diseases. The next one to unlock would be virus, but and then the one after that is parasite, and then after that it's like the necrophage or something. So apparently zombies or something like that. See, I went with the heat resistance just because we're already here, so we'll get a bigger base of people, which may or may not be a good idea. We'll probably grab cold as soon as we get into colder area. We are in the U.S., which is great. If we can get to Canada soon. Or one of the northern countries over here. No, not yet. But then we'll go for the... Uh, oh, we've got in the, the UK. What's the UK stats? They are cold, wet, urban, and rich. So I guess if that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and grab the cold as well. And that's probably it for the resistance. Then we'll probably go back to transmission versions. Uh, we may not go for rodents because we know that that's been decreased in this game. It might still be worth getting. I don't know. If we win, then we'll be able to unlock a different type of disease. So let's cross our fingers, chat. Maybe we'll win this one. Gets drug resistance. Definitely now that we're in rich countries like the US. Heavy flooding in France. Yeah. Who analysis warn of severe damage to national biotech industry and research facilities? Because <clears throat> France is definitely a rich, powerful nation that could be a big source of research. And uh, that is going to be really, really helpful for us. So yeah, next time I get enough points, I'll probably grab the drug resistance. Um... 200 dead in France. We didn't even do anything about it. Twitch chat is mutated. Develop the insomnia symptom without DNA points. Well, we will probably de-evolve that as well. Again, keep the severity down under the radar. We don't want to be noticed. And yeah, as soon as we can. So right now it's costing 14 DNA points for the drug resistance. So we'll wait for that. More ships. Oh, we're already in the UK though. Egypt is like... 100% infected. Awesome. So all planes and boats, well, not all, but most planes and boats leaving out of Egypt will also be infected, which is really good news. Two more DNA points away, we'll be able to do the drug resistance. Because the US, you can see it's going very, very slowly. Rich, wealthy nations have a lot of drugs, a lot of hospitals, things like that, which will help to delay the spread a little bit. One more point away. So getting the drug resistance should help. I mean, it should help it spread everywhere, but I think it's most notable in those rich nations. So let's go and grab that. So you can see what it's unlocked is one, there's drug resistance two, which is handy. Even more effectiveness in wealthy nations. Not bad. Quite expensive though. But the other thing it does is do genetic hardening, make it harder to analyze, uh, analyze in the lab, which decreases research speed in the future, which makes it very valuable. So I think the rate in the US should increase now. And I, I think it has. I mean, it's still going to take a little bit before it goes kind of geometric, but it should still help overall. The NHS has been cut too much to prevent Twitch chat. Thanks, Cameron. And in the US, of course, we know who to blame, according to the medics. Twitch chat has infected the USA. Thanks, Obama. Although in his defense, it's kind of infected everywhere, I think. Is all of Africa except Madagascar infected? It is. Good chunk of the Middle East. Iran. Not into Afghanistan. Oh, it is in Pakistan. And now it's in... No? I don't know. It is in Pakistan. It's not yet in... Oh, it is in India. I can see the dots. Not in China. Still not in Russia. Another boat. Where's this one going? Uh, looks like it's going to the US, which is already infected. Although that should give him a little bit of a bump. Still going very slowly over there. So the U.S., of course, is very urban and very wealthy. 
So, we may still want to grab the rats. I don't know. Or we might want to get level 2 drug resistance, even though it's incredibly expensive. Good, good, good. So, how many worlds... Okay, look. How many worlds? How many countries are not yet infected? And yeah, it's funny. 200 dead, but we didn't do it. Canada, Greenland, Argentina. Lots. Oh, the Caribbean. That's another one that could definitely shut down its ports. We're not too careful. Madagascar! Yes! Very important. Okay. Often a last holdout. And if it closes its ports, GG. Game over. Canada now infected with Twitch chat. New Zealand. That's another one that could be isolated and uh, not infected. New Guinea is currently clean. Oh, a couple more nations up there in Europe. In ERP. Boom. DNA points. More disease. Okay. I might just I might just leave it right now and not spend any more points. We'll just be patient. Just take the slow route. Let it keep spreading. But we do have points. We could spread. I'm still waiting for... Well, Canada cancels being cold. I guess. Maybe. Oh, and we're in Russia now. You know what? Let's go and get... Uh, oh, we have the first level of cold. We don't have heat? No. Oh, it's, we have the points for the second level of cold. No, I'm not doing that. I could get genetic hardening ahead of time. It doesn't help us right now, but it will help once the research kicks in. Might be a good idea, actually. I'll go and pick that up right away. Just so that I've got the points. So once they start researching, and they will, it will slow down their research rate. It also unlocks, which is quite interesting, the genetic reshuffle. So this so this will make it so they research slower, but this will actually undo some research, which is kind of nice. So again, just opens up some options for us later on. Look at that spread. India. So many people live in India. 1.4 billion and we're going to spread to all of them good 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 still very slow progress in those rich countries i think we may need to go with double drug resistance libra triple zero says best to build up cure resistance early sojourn says that twitch chat is very aggressive you know i have noticed that Dead of Fire says, as a British citizen, I can safely say our healthcare system cannot withstand the great Twitch chat bacteria. Well, in, in the defense of the NHS, nothing will be able to withstand it. Well, nothing will be able to withstand its sort of general appearance. Whether we actually kill anything is going to be a whole other question. Scientists increase understanding of inflammation, have had a breakthrough in their understanding of inflammation, and will be able to cure diseases with it more easily. Okay, we have to remember... Don't go for inflammation. We'll leave that out of our disease. Okay, that's very important. We are not yet in Greenland or Iceland. So we, we want to be in every country before we start getting really aggro. Once we are, then we could potentially, you know, take a few more risks. I mean, keep saving up the points for now. We're just, we're mostly waiting for it just to hit different places. I could go. No, you know, there's no reason to do anything. We could speed it up. I think I'll just save it. There we go. Iceland. Bam. Good stuff. And there. And there. You know, I think I'm going to grab the level 2 bacteria resistance is what I'm going to do. Now, I think I'm... It, based on the description, it sounds like I'm naturally heat resistant. Maybe it would actually just make more sense to go for level 2 cold. Illinois 20 thank you for subscribing. Sorry I don't have the pop-up working properly. It's, it's supposed to be there. But it's not working, so I don't know. This is like the second time in a row. Yeah, I'm going to grab level 2 um, cold. And some people are suggesting level 2 drugs. Might be a good idea, especially those rich countries are still very hard. This should help us in Canada. Barely. Yeah, maybe we'll go for level 2 drugs. It's spreading very slowly in the U.S. It is picking up, finally, but it's, you know, it's not going crazy. Russia is um, mostly uh, rural, wet, and cold. Anemia has mutated. We will go and devolve that as well although it doesn't do much in terms of severity we're going to play it super safe this is clearly not a speed run ah excellent we have spread to new guinea see this and like europe universalis 4 good ways to uh to learn your world geography caribbean greenland or caribbean i don't know people say it different ways lots of countries still not infected Greenland will definitely be hard, though, because there's not that many boats that go there, And as I watch one go, um, and there's no airport, apparently. There, uh, news to you guys, if you didn't know, there's no airports whatsoever in Greenland, at least not 
uh, in the context of the game. Yeah, Russia's still quite slow. And they're not wealthy in the game settings. Hmm. I don't know what to do to accelerate that. I mean, to a certain extent, it's just going to be as we devolve or evolve more um, infectivity in general. Oh, there's a new country. What is this? Oh, Kazakhstan. Nice. One point seven billion people infected. Well, one point nine now. As I read this, if Quill loses, blame Canada. I think that's fair. Uh, no, I didn't watch the Stanley Cup Finals. I do have Tier Two Cold, I believe, and we are in cold countries. Yeah, Tier Two Cold. I mean, I could grab this Level Two Bacterial Resistance, which should make it even stronger in the cold, which might be better than say. Well, I guess if I get tier two hot, then there's another one I can grab over here. But I, I don't think I need to do that. Uh, I think I might go for transmission. So, like, for Russia in particular, we could get the livestock mutation. Because that would increase spread in rural regions. I mean, especially in rural regions. It actually happens everywhere. But we're going to do that. That should hopefully help. Does Canada count as rural? It's just cold and rich, and that's all. I don't know if I agree with that, but there you have it. USA, 36,000, 37,000, still going relatively slowly. All the hot areas are definitely getting there. West Africa is not going that fast either, although there's like 30 million people now. China, relatively slow, and it's just urban. China's actually going to be a tough nut to crack here if we don't do the rodent thing. We may still have to do the rodent thing, especially for the US because it counts as urban. Yes. I think I will, actually. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Evolve that. And do that. There's not as many people living in the cities, but it's still going to help. It's going. It's going. Severe storm strike Zimbabwe. Who announced warned the property inf infrastructure damage, uh, but expect a rapid cleanup. Okay. And again, Angola. Angola is always like my curse. I can never get in there. It's always the last one to fall for some reason. It's hot and poor. But, I mean, it is in there. And I think what we'll do at some point is probably get some... Uh, we might get mosquitoes as well. Peru is going slowly as well. It is poor, rural, cold, and arid. Interesting combination. Severity slows down research. Well, at least increases the amount that must be done. Now, that's interesting. Severity also increases the likelihood that research will start. So, I mean, usually once they start researching a cure, like at any sort of pace, that's when I go nuts on the actual symptoms. I'm like, all right, screw this. Now it's a race. God damn it, Russia, really? I could go for... Well, I already have double cold. I have double cold plus... No, I don't have double bacteria. Let's go get the extra level of bacterial resistance. Hopefully that'll help. Insomnia mutated on its own. I will probably cancel that. Although, at a certain point, I'm like, I don't want to cancel it anymore because... Although this doesn't help uh, transmission at all, so... Hmm. Come on, Canada. Get infected. Don't you watch Twitch chat? And Russia? Australia. Is there anywhere we're not yet? Oh, we just hit a new country. Greenland and Sweden. Well, Sweden will get there at some point because it's touching. Greenland is the problem. We need to sit back at the very least and wait for something to go there. It's going to have to be a ship. We could go for double waterborne. I don't think we're going to need that. We mostly just need to wait for it to spread. I guess part of it is unusual to play at a higher speed, so we're going to do that now. Go to medium speed. Going to keep spreading. Russia, 1.2 million, so it's going. Canada, 400,000. Well, that's like half the population right there. Or not 400,000, 4,000. It's about half the population. Canada actually has like a 40 million-ish population. Okay, that's just DNA points. It's not a new country. I can't believe Sweden's not infected yet. And it's still going pretty slow up north. I could go level 3. It's not that expensive. But I, I don't think I want to do that. I could go for 
more genetic hardening. There we go. Russia is finally going like supersonic or super saiyan. Anemia mutated again? No. Come on, just someone send a boat to Greenland. Please. Oh, there it is. Yes. And Sweden, same time. Okay, we are now in every single country. We're going to wait for the population to keep going up over here. Now, at this point, I don't think I'm going to de-evolve anything else. Worldwide, 6 billion people are infected. Seven more people died, probably in the second floods. Okay. Now, Greenland and Canada are still pretty much not hit. The Caribbean has been hit by a tsunami. So worldwide infection is very quick, but if they do start to develop a cure, it's possible the northern countries here will continue to survive, which would be a damn shame. Double drug resistance. Is Greenland rich? No, it's just cold. Still, it's probably a good idea. All right, if, if the Twitch chat demands it, I will go with level two drug resistance. There we go. It's working very well in Canada. Greenland still going incredibly slowly, but once I start hitting the symptoms, it should be okay. And it'll be like, it'll come out of nowhere. What is it? Central Europe. Look at this, like hardly touched. Although hopefully with the new drug resistance. Yeah. Okay, good. And we're going to turn like, we're going to try to go as lethal as quickly as possible. I could turn on coughing now, which would dramatically increase the infection rate, but let, let's just wait. Wait a little bit longer. Now, what I'm worried about in this game is that we're not going to manage to kill people fast enough. We're going to run out of sort of like DNA points and we're not going to go lethal, but we'll, we'll try. Once you get to 100% of the population, get the middle row so you have full organ failure. And yeah, the complete organ failure is pretty good. We do have to dodge inflammation ideally, which if I recall correctly is somewhere over here. Somewhere in the middle, somewhere, top or bottom. And yeah, starting coughing is a pretty good way to go. I mean, it'll help really get the last few people as well. So we got rash for free. Is it... Would it be correct for us at this point to not de-evolve that? I think it may be. The rash is actually pretty good for increasing the infection. I'm pretty sure. Doesn't really tell us. If I click de-evolve, I don't remember if there's another pop-up or not. I'm going to leave it in. Can lead to sweating. I'm going to leave it in. It might be a mistake. Probably is. But you can see it's increasing the rate quite a bit. Greenland. Yeah, see, the, the rate is like 20 people, 15. Oh, that was a small tick. There we go, another big tick. I think we're okay. Yeah. Some people are saying devolve. Some people are saying leave it in. We'll see. How is it not discovered yet? Well, we have no symptoms. It's a bacteria, you know, it's like bacteria that happens to grow on your skin. You're like, well, whatever. Everyone knows it's there. There's like 10 billion bacteria that lives in your gut. We just sort of, you know, accept it. It's one of those. We're just riding along. Canada, there we go. Sweden going super saiyan now. Yeah. Greenland still, <laughs> Greenland's going to be the holdout. On the other hand, at this point, as long as the disease is there, and as long as we don't kill too fast, even if they start working a cure at this point, we should be able to hit them everywhere. Because that's the trick. You can't, if you kill too fast, it'll like kill this slice of people off and then everyone else will be fine. There's a reason like something like Ebola is like, it's scary, but it's not that scary because it actually kills too fast. It's the stuff that takes years to kill you and spreads really fast. That's been, like the most dangerous stuff. More people dead, but again, it's just natural disasters. We're not the one that's done it. That's done it? Really? Grammar much? Oh my god, I have been streaming way too long today. I think we're going to do this one, though. Alright, Sweden. There we go, past the halfway point. Greenland, come on, Greenland. Greenland. You're not even green. Ooh, free DNA points, thank you. If we evolve coughing right now, it'll almost certainly finish up. I'm hoping we get some more free mutations. Uh, you get more free mutations the more you're in the transmission tree. Okay, 73, 8,000. We're going for coughing. I'm pulling the trigger, you guys. Four DNA points on coughing. 
especially in high density urban areas, which doesn't really help us in Greenland because it's only cold. We can throw in sneezing as well. No, I'm going to just, just the one. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Bam. Bam. Oh, new minor disease is spreading in a normal checkup. A doctor in Egypt, interestingly enough, found a new disease, which has been named Twitch chat. It appears to be mostly harmless, but must be investigated further. Other countries are also reporting the disease. Check the world. No research has started yet. They're aware of it. Twitch chat is global. They're aware of it, but they haven't started to actually work on a, a cure. Like whatever. It's just a minor cough, right? Who cares? Oh yeah. See, we're working towards, we're 99% infected, but Again, it's, it can be something like Greenland here where you kill people off too fast and everything just goes terrible. I think we've got this, though. So, yeah, I think total organ failure. Is it here or here? Somewhere like that. I think we want to go sneezing next. Well, cold climate. If we want that, we can go straight to pneumonia. Interestingly enough, so pneumonia has, yeah, more severity, but less infectivity, whereas sneezing is like all infection. Everyone in the world has, oh yes, you're right. There's the rash as well. I missed that. I think I'm going to grab sneezing. Just finish it up. And then immune suppression can be lethal. Greater freedom of mutation. Pick that up right now. There's the total organ failure. Okay. We're not going to pick that up quite yet. We don't want to go lethal until we know Indonesia starts working on a cure. Okay. I think it's too late, Indonesia. I hate to break it to you, but I'm pretty goddamn sure humanity is doomed. First death in Japan. That was fast. What the hell are our symptoms? Coughing, sneezing, immune suppression, and a rash. Okay, well, I guess that would be it. There's like a tiny bit of lethality. It can happen there. It's not going to be like fast. Insomnia symptom mutated by itself. Now, what's interesting, some of these symptoms actually make it harder to research for a cure. Insomnia does make people less productive, which is quite nice. Paranoia is quite nice, and I think somewhere up there you get your coma as well. I'm not going to mutate it quite yet, though. Greenland, come on, Greenland. Greenland, go, go, go. 22,000 uh, healthy people still. Wow, people are dying, like, pretty fast. Yeah, only 20,000 healthy people worldwide, and they're probably all here. New Zealand shuts down airports. They're trying to limit the spread of Twitch chat by limiting access into and out of the country. Time will tell if this will work. So, let me tell you something, New Zealand. I'm pretty sure you're already dead. I always do that. I go to New Guinea when I want New Zealand. You're 100% infected, except for the dead people. The dead people are no longer considered having this disease. 22 dead in Greenland. Yeah, we're not. they're not dying too fast, which is good. They should hit 100%. And then we go crazy. Oh, free DNA. And... The World Cup has been cancelled due to fears over Twitch chat. I'm terribly sorry, Brazil. Actually, some of you people in Brazil are, would be quite happy about that. There are zero healthy people in the world. Everyone is either dead or is about to be. So they are researching. The cure they're expecting to finish in 2017. It is currently 2016. Uh, so it's 10% of the way to the cure. I'm pretty sure, though, we don't need to do any reshuffling. We're going to go for total organ failure massively increasing severity and massively increasing lethality. And that's what we're looking for now. We're looking for things that will kill people. So yeah, coma is pretty good for severity. Significantly harder to cure. Um, and we can reach there if we had the points. Okay. And as we kill people, we should get some more points. So we'll go for coma in a second. No healthy people left in the world. The last healthy person on the planet recently became infected with Twitch chat. They must have been watching Twitch plays Pokemon. All right, cure is happening. We do have points for a shuffle. We could throw one in the mix if we felt we needed to. Number of dead is increasing. What's great is at some point the research might start going backwards as like places lose their stuff. Like Germany is a pretty good place for research, right? That's quite a few beakers. They're sixth worldwide for research. But uh, as they start to shut down, they will not be able to do that. Actually, what's that icon? I don't know what that... Oh, there's a tool. Too. Global priority level. Okay. And yeah, they still have their borders open and think... It doesn't matter what they have done. Research funding five, six. Yeah, so they're initiating more and more research overall. Spending more money to try to cure it. 18%. We might do one reshuffle. People are dying. 
Research doctors all around the world are completely focused on developing a cure for Twitch chat. How much does a reshuffle cost? 25. All right. We might have to throw one of them out there. We'll see. Or we could just get comatose. See, and the problem is we hit this point where we're not getting any more points. I'm worried we're not going to kill people fast enough. We may have wanted to go a little bit more aggro. Started the cough a little sooner. I don't know. Research coming in fast. We'll probably do one reshuffle. It, we could make it harder to, to cure just by grabbing the coma. I don't know, chat. What do you think is the right thing to do? Some people say coma. It does increase the lethality as well. Okay, we'll grab the coma. It'll, it'll slow down the research. If we go and look over here, it'll tell us how much is... Uh, mm, there's somewhere. There we go. Research... This is the research being conducted, and here's the requirement. So we've bumped up the research requirement a little bit, but the research is still going pretty goddamn fast. Still, we did increase the lethality a little bit. Applesoft announces new eye cure device to help cure Twitch chat. Release date to be determined. Okay, people are dying in massive clumps, though. Look at this. They're falling into comas and dying. I don't see this number going up much. Normal life in Indonesia is beginning to break down due to Twitch chat. Cure research is starting to slow. Nice. No country is taking the lead yet on the research either, so we haven't had to pop the, the blue bubbles, which is a good sign. Research is still going up. Definitely going up much, much slower than before. Capping out there. And that's the thing. As people die, fewer people will be able to do research over here. Um, there we go. Grab some paralysis. Makes it even harder to cure. Can be lethal. Increases the lethality just a little bit. We're going to slow that down. Or we can save up for a reshuffle. You know what? Maybe I'm just going to save up for a reshuffle now. I think we're doing okay. I think doing a reshuffle will do more damage to them than anything else. So we should have enough points for it right now. Boom. Oh, I'm sorry. My DNA is nowhere close to the way it was before. Check the graphs. There we go. Another huge jump in the amount of research that needs to be done. Meanwhile, two thir or one third of the population in the world is dead. Half the population of the world is now dead. This is never going to advance. In fact, it might start to go backwards. We're going to kill the world. Ready to go, chat? <clears throat> Devolve transmission. Oh, yeah, that's right. I can get more points that way. I have done that before. I've forgotten to do it this time. But because we don't need to transmit the disease anymore, we can do that. Although, one of the things I will say, especially these... Okay, these definitely is a no-brainer. But... These guys can give you free mutations, so you may not want to devolve them because they, um, they're only giving you two points each, and they may not make or break the difference. Although, if you're looking, you're desperately trying to get two more points for a reshuffle, that's the way to do it. So, I'll probably, uh, what's the highest lethality right now? Systemic infection. That's probably what I'll do. I think we'll make, even though, I don't know, I'm wrong. I was just going to say the paralysis gives us more severity. It doesn't. Uh, but even if this gave us no severity, higher lethality is the thing that matters. So systemic inve infection. Pathogen affects multiple organs and tissue types, causing body-wide infections that spread fast and can be fatal. Now I'll just watch the number of dead pile up. So New Zealand prioritizes healthcare for the infected. Central Europe removes drug research safeguards. The news is great. You got to check this out. Uh, East Africa sets up trauma centers. Iceland gives cure maximum priority. Russia removes drug safeguards. Norway closes all ports. Twitch chat genome fully sequenced, which does help. France bans all flight. Poland uses mass graves. Mexico declares state or national emergency. Ports, mass graves, mass graves, trauma centers. It's not going to matter. World, you're already dead and you just don't know it. Well, listen, Twitch chat has been very effective this time around in that uh, you're going to help me succeed here where I have not yet. Australia is first to fall into anarchy. Due to Twitch chat. No cure research can take place. Wow, that's harsh. There's still like 6 million people living there. And they just gave up hope. Like, screw it. Time to riot. They cancelled the World Cup. Unacceptable. Um, oh, we can actually get more lethality from tumors. Did you know tumors can be lethal? I did not realize. We can get quite a bit from fever as well. There might be a combo that we can unlock. Just to get an achievement here and bonus points. I'm not sure what that might be. Does the chat know? 
gonna take too long to get a response. This is sis. I don't even remember where you get diarrhea. Oh, probably from nausea. We got we got sneezing. I don't even know. I might have already unlocked. Oops, it's possible. Let's go for um. We'll go for nausea and vomiting because that's always fun. It doesn't increase lethality in any way, but it's messy. So that's entertaining to me. Hopefully we don't lose because of that. I think we've got it. <laughs> but all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, that might have been a horrible, horrible mistake. Yeah, diarrhea. Fourteen points. We might be able to sneak it in there. Just, just get it in. Infection through feces, potentially lethal dehydration. Poor countries, very vulnerable. Well, there you go. So it does increase our lethality a little bit more as well. Six billion people dead. 6.1. 6.2. Look at the world. Like everything is shattering and collapsing over here. Someone just shut down the internet. Who? Where? South Africa's government of Mass Korea's healthcare. Where was that? Kazakhstan shuts down the internet. You bastards. I mean, I know it's the apocalypse and all, but there, there's no reason to do that. So right now, Curie TA is pushed back to 2018. Like, everyone's going to be dead by then easily. You can see, like, the amount of research being made is, like, it's just falling off as there's just no one left in the world. It's interesting that the... Uh, Difficulty of research actually dropped a little bit. Did I grab inflammation somewhere and not realize it? No, I still don't know where inflammation is. Ooh, dysentery. Hey, we can be playing some uh, Oregon Trail. Yeah. Spain declares national emergency. Projectile vomiting symptom combo. You're welcome, Twitch chat. If there's anything that makes me think of Twitch chat, it's projectile vomiting. Six point five billion people dead. The number of people remaining are in the hundreds of millions. Two hundred million. And that's it. Fewer than a billion people left on Earth. Research is still ticking up ever so slightly. There's still someone in some lab somewhere that's like, no, no, I can do it. I can find the cure. I can find the cure. No. No, no, you can't. Shutting down the internet cures Twitch chat. Yeah, sort of. Korea's government has fallen. No more StarCraft. Oh, that's a shame. And throw some more symptoms in there. Actually, we can't. We can't afford anything over here unless we get rid of more transmission. Still hoping to get some free mutations, though. All right, max speed. Let's just end it. 80 million, 70 million, 60 million, 5 million, or 50, I should say. Sneezing and diarrhea causes unwanted accidents, lowering productivity. There we go. I got an achievement for that. The oops symptom. I had gotten a projectile vomiting before, but never this. Lowering productivity, drawing attention to Twitch chat. So much more severity probably or something like that definitely a lot more attention lowering productivity is good though makes it harder to find a cure not that it matters if we take a look at the graph again though it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, mostly flatland for difficulty and there yeah you can see like you can follow other things the and the number of healthy wait what oh it's the same color as the other one i'm like how are people getting healthy again infected vroom. dead vroom. all right good There's less than 10 million people, 8 million, 7 million, 6 million, 5 million, 4 million. Hey, free DNA. Pulmonary edema symptoms mutated. Twitch chat is mutated, developed pulmonary edema symptoms without using DNA points. Well, look at that. See, free mutations. Uh, that was over here. Potentially fatal heart abnormality, abnormality causing breakdown of respiratory system, releasing pathogen into the air. Oh, that's quite handy, actually. Maybe we can get a pulmonary fibrosis next. 1.7, 1.3, 1.2, 1, 1 million people left. 800,000, 700,000, 600,000. Let's go to normal speed. Twitch chat to eradicate humans. <laughs> Twitch chat has destroyed the world despite the world's best efforts. The last few humans lie dying in holes with no chance of survival. Quarter million people left on Earth. 200,000 people left on Earth. 150,000 people left on Earth. Let's, let's pause. Let's take a look at our world status. All life has been eradicated in the USA, Canada, Greenland, Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, Caribbean, Colombia, Bolivia, Iceland, UK. Sounds like um, that, uh, what's that cartoon song? Yeah. Anna, Animaniacs. 
Poland and Sweden, Finland and Russia, Turkey, Baltic states, Madagascar, West Africa, Morocco, Sudan, and South Africa, Indonesia, New Zealand, Southeast Asia, Australia, China, India, Japan, Korea, Central Asia, and Middle East, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Angola. Yeah. So, some there's some countries that literally have no one left in them. There's zero people left in Canada. Canada no longer exists. You're welcome, world. Canada really was a plague on Earth, and really, this is the reason that we created this. Just, just to eliminate the Canadians. Wait, hold on. 34,000 people left. 30,000 people left. 24,000 humans left on Earth. 20,000. 15,000. 13. 10,000 people left. 6,000 people left. 4,000 people left. 3,000 people left. 2,000. 1,500. Oh, I like the picture of the Eiffel Tower all, like, abandoned. 1,200 people left on Earth. Where do they live? They all live in Ukraine. The only people left alive right now are Ukrainians. Everyone else is gone. I could, wish I could go super slow motion here. 1,000 people left. 793. 597. 159. 159 people left on Earth. Zero. Zero people left on Earth. Victory! Twitch chat has successfully eliminated all life on Earth. Got a bacterial victory, finally. My god. Thanks for Twitch chat helping me out here. Oh, right. And there's the, uh, there's the replay. It took 1,081 days. Just over three years. Genetic complexity is complex. Cure progress. They were only at 62%. We were bacteria. It was the main game. Normal difficulty. Total score, 6,300. Share the news. My bacteria called Twitch chat just wiped out the world in 1,081 uh, days. I was going to say 1,081. And yeah, you can share it with things. We'll replay on fast speed. Just watch the spread. Mmm, so good. Oh, we can switch to graphs too. We've won. We've killed all our hosts. That's true. Yeah. By killing the last remaining human on Earth, Twitch chat has basically eradicated itself. Really, what Twitch chat was trying to do is cure itself by killing all things that it could inhabit. Now there's no more humans, no more Twitch chat. Cured. All right. Starting in Egypt, definitely very good. Definitely much better than starting in Iceland. Although that used to be a really, really strong strategy. Really strong. I don't know. Maybe starting in Egypt was always stronger. Room. Mmm, that spread. I like the lines that get drawn, actually. It's very cool. So, I hope everyone has enjoyed this game of uh, Plague Inc. If I exit, does it exit the game? I hope not. There we go. The ATP boost gene type and virus plague type has been discovered and unlocked. So, yeah, we could play as viruses now. Rapidly mutating pathogen, which is extremely hard to control. And that's the thing with this, is it will constantly evolve on its own, which means you're having to fight against it to not be discovered. So there's also the fungus. They struggle to travel long distances without special effort. Yeah, that's right. It's hard for them to spread. The Neurax worm, manipulative organism that burrows into the brain. Probably harder to get a cure for, actually, if you spend money on it. I bet. The parasite. Uh, parasitic lifestyle prevents DNA alterations from everyday infection. I don't know what that means. You get less evolution points. Probably you don't get the pop-ups, or you only get the pop-ups. Necrovirus. Virus. Unclassified. Early, early analysis suggests extreme regenerative abilities. A prion virus. That's basically a mad cow disease. Or not a prion virus, but a prion disease. Slow, subtle, and extremely complex pathogen hidden inside the brain. Nanovirus, out of control microscopic machine with a built in kill switch. And bioweapon, exceptionally lethal pathogen that kills everything it touches. I bet you with this one, it actually does have a very high lethality, and the challenge will be to not kill off all humans before you've spread to all humans. So, yeah, kind of, kind of an interesting, fun game to play. I don't know what this ATP does, ATP boost. Get bonus DNA at the beginning. Oh, well, that's really good. And yeah, that was playing without the Darwinism as well. Increases the chance of plague mutating, which means you can actually get a lot of free points from like de-evolving your disease, for example. So 
But uh, that will have to wait until next time. This brings us to the end of the live stream and also to the end of this video for YouTube. So thank you very much, everyone who's come out to watch. Really appreciate it. Do check out Plague Inc. Do keep in mind the game is not yet finished. A lot of the modes that you will see are not uh, yet complete. Apparently there may be a multiplayer. We don't know anything about it. We have no idea if it's going to be good or if it's going to be garbage. If you're buying it for multiplayer, well, that would be a mistake because it's not there yet, right? Just like if you're buying it for custom scenarios, not there yet. Uh, they do have some official scenarios, apparently. Really? That wasn't there last time I played. It's been a while. The Black Death. Oh, quite cool. Oh, I'm going to have to play through these. Look at this. Black Death, Artificial Organs, Frozen Virus, Nipah Virus. So all these will be unlocked by playing through the Black Death scenario. So I have not done this yet because this one wasn't in the game last time I was here. The speedruns are quite cool because after you um, after you, you get one, it, it stays there. You can share it with your friends and compete with each other to who can finish first. So it took us over a thousand days to kill everyone with bacteria. You can make it a lot faster. Um, and there's a tutorial, but yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it's there yet either. Leaderboards. So if you do uh, set up uh, friends, I wonder if you could set up a group. No, there's not even a, there we go. Global scoreboard. So is there any way for us to scroll to the top? No, it only shows us the people near us. Oh, that's a shame, but it's quite cool to uh, compete for the, uh, the winning ones. Speed runs. Show me the speed runs for bacteria. No? Really? No? Hmm. Again, not everything is complete, but I, I have to say, like, I really like that aspect of it. Um, and especially the scenarios and stuff are very cool. So, yes, again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment. Did you know I read every single comment someone leaves on my video? That's insane. Why would I do that? I don't know, but I'll read yours.